Uh, should we talk about Hassan Minaj now? Uh, of course. <laughs> this is interesting because you want to talk about gaslighting. <laughs> Hassan Minaj has been gaslighting his audience, apparently. And I found this to be an interesting story. Um, so Hassan Minaj is, is essentially being vetted for The Daily Show, I guess. He's, I think he's kind of the favorite to take over for Trevor Noah whenever they come back from the writer's strike and everything, if they do. And I didn't know much about Hassan Minaj. There's been a couple controversies with him over the years in that show Patriot Act that was on Netflix. I remember there was some controversy that led to that getting taken off. I don't really remember or care what it was. Um, I didn't know much about uh, Hassan Minaj's comedy. I always assumed he was a funny guy based on the fact that he has an audience. Uh, shame on me, based on some of the clips I've seen. <laughs> Hassan strikes me more as someone that built an audience in that kind of era uh, from 2020 and prior where it was a lot more about what you represented. You know, I think we're drifting away from that, luckily. But there were a lot of people in the last decade or so that built an audience, Hannah Gatsby probably being the, the poster child of this, where you have an audience because you have a message. Uh, the people are there to clap, not necessarily laugh. They're there to, uh, you go girl at your punchlines rather than get any like comedic uh, value out of it. So Hassan Minaj seems to be one of these guys. Um, he makes a lot of uh, powerful racial points. And that's where this story gets interesting because uh, the New Yorker, did a piece where essentially they looked into a lot of Hassan Minaj's claims of, uh, actually, can we pull that story up? Yes. Just cause I don't want to, um, I don't want to paraphrase anything. I'd like to get it correct. The, uh, <clears throat> what, what was the, why did this start by the way? Is it just because of the daily show? And is that it? So you mean, why would the article be like, why would they look into this now? Yeah. I assume that's probably why, is that whenever anyone has an opportunity like this, he got Seth Simons in a way, in his yeah. own in his own world, but in a way it's someone saying like, oh, this guy has an opportunity, let's try and dig up some skeletons on him. I think that's probably it. That makes sense. Um, which, which sucks. Now, what we're going to evaluate is like, does Hassan Minaj deserve it to some extent? Overall, I don't think he does. But I do think there's some interesting points here to be made. Yeah, this is uh, um, how Hassan Minaj's fabrications could help white supremacy. The comedian is the boy who cried racist wolf. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This is where they get, you know, Hassan Minaj is on their side and then they get indignant about it. Yeah. They're like, they're like no, no, no. We got to kick this Indian guy out of the right side of history. Yeah, yeah. He stinks, right? Isn't he... Uh, uh, isn't he like too right leaning for the Daily Show? Is he? It doesn't seem like it based on some of this stuff. For some reason, I thought like um, maybe it was during statue season that he had some things that I agreed with, and that's oh, where well, may <laughs> maybe well, that. But that's what I said. I I kind of started to like Trevor Noah because like he's clearly a left leaning guy, but he yeah. would once in a while say things that like he's right. you know not supposed to go off script from right. like what he was supposed to say. So I kind of liked Trevor for Noah. Trevor Noah for that. So maybe Hassan's one of those guys. I don't know a ton about him outside of this article. Would you like me to read this article here? Yeah, please. Give us the give us the yeah, the cliff notes, if nothing else. Uh, last year, when I saw Hassan Minaj perform stand-up comedy in New York, he told a joke about how he came across a drunk white woman who was vomiting on the side of the street. And when he went to check if she was all right, she looked up and asked if he was her Uber driver. <laughs> he does have a lot of these convenient stories. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's what's interesting. So well, read the read the punchline and then. <laughs> um, I rolled my eyes, turned to my friend and called bullshit. Yeah. Uh, turns out it probably was the comedian, a Muslim Indian American who has built a brand and career around autobiograph autobiographical comedy with the political overtones, often centering himself in stories where he is subjected to racism. Yeah. So here's what's interesting is that like Dave Chappelle and Louis CK are probably the two best examples of guys that are really funny and well-respected, but also yep. will tell lies like blatant lie. Norm McDonald's another one. Yeah. They'll tell lies quote unquote in their, in their standup. For example, 
I don't think uh, Dave Chappelle bought crack off a of baby on a, when he was sitting in a limousine. Oh, you don't think? In a, in a bad neighborhood. That well, probably wasn't true. I don't think his buddy uh, was racing police officers and said, uh, Officer, I didn't know I couldn't do that. <laughs> I don't think those are necessarily true stories. Um, and even, even like Louis is famous for like, he'll have bits where he's like, ah, was it, a, you know, was it a Tuesday or a Wednesday? It doesn't matter. It didn't fucking happen anyways. <laughs> get, get back into the joke. Right. So these would be technically lies, but mm -hmm. no one can, they're funny stories. The difference here is, and that's when I was worried, when I saw this article, I was like, they're going after a comedian because his stories aren't true. But this is more like what we talked about with Bobby Lee. Remember we talked about Bobby Lee and his lawsuit with Amazon? Yeah. Bobby Lee's been telling this story for years about uh, some underage trans hooker or something like that. <laughs> and then when he was called out on it, he was like, well, I made it up. What's the big deal? I made the story up. And it's like, yeah, but you build it as true. And when people called you a liar, you were like, no, 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 I swear. You're like... You swore it was a true story. And also it was presented in a way like this really happened. It was told on a podcast, not on stage. Um, so what I want to do with Hassan is listen to his stuff because I wasn't familiar with his comedy at all. So let's listen to this and say, is it more in the Dave Chappelle category or the Bobby Lee category where you were trying to present yourself as something that, that isn't true? So the main story that was in question was this anthrax thing. Um, so you have the audio of that, right, Craig? Yeah, let me pull it. Up. God forbid we play the video. Netflix will sodomize us. They won't even. This Netflix doesn't allow any screen recording of any kind. They so come to my home and they uh, they they don't touch me. They rape my girlfriend and make me watch. <laughs> Those are the stipulations oh. that they laid down. And I'm like, fellas, come on. What are we back at the Wilbur? Knock it off. <laughs> Uh, here it is here. A fan mail. I go, give me my fan mail, Carlos. He grabs a stack of letters. He hands them to me. I rip it open. I flip it over. And all this white powder falls into the stroller. <gasps> oh, no. And it falls on my daughter's shoulder. Her neck, her cheeks. And she's staring at me. And I run upstairs and I tell Bina. And this time I can't lie. We rush down to NYU, but this time we go through the emergency room. It's a comedy well, show, right? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Hold on, just just so everyone has the full context. He opened his fan mail, and something he believes to be anthrax spilled all over his daughter. Hilarious. Very, very powerful stuff. Now, hold on a second. Maybe we're working our way towards a hilarious punchline. That's what we don't know yet. That's right. He could be he could be drawing us in. That's one of the rules of comedy. He could be drawing us in for a little misdirection. It could be the greatest punchline in the history of time. Perhaps. We, let's see. The moment they see the baby, they just rip the clothes off her and they take her away. And me and Bina, we're sitting in the waiting room for hours and we're not talking. Finally, around midnight, nurse comes in and she's holding my daughter. But she's with an investigator. And the investigator reaches into his pocket and he pulls out a plastic baggie filled with white powder. Why he goes, was Mr. Minhaj. You couldn't just hold it? <laughs> this is insane. <laughs> this is towards the end, too. I, this is like, I think, his closer, right? Close. Yeah, Close. so he, he's he's wrapping it. Hey, again, maybe we haven't gotten to a punchline yet, so maybe we're working our way towards one. It could be a big one. Yeah, we'll go until he hits a punchline. Yeah. You're very lucky. This isn't real anthrax. Oh, thank you. But I've been in this department long it's enough. It's not even a real story. It doesn't come out and could neither is this story. <laughs> Mr. Minhaj, I'm not even a real investigator. This how isn't funny, a real hospital. How funny would it have been though if he was like, and neither is this story. Thank you. That's my time. <laughs> you guys funny. will get this after a New Yorker piece in a few years. So I'll talk to you later. <laughs> yeah. Where? So I have to ask you something, young man. Who on earth have you been antagonizing? Oh, come on. I hope that wasn't the punchline. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, they, my God. The buddy. audience laughed, but. Well, they probably would have laughed at almost anything other than the story he was telling. 
Can I? So you you probably know a little more about law enforcement than me, but is it general practice? That, uh, you know, like an FBI agent will come out and be like, hey, pff, whose feathers did you ruffle, son? I mean, we, we could have had anthrax here, you silly uh, Mr. goose. Mr. Minaj, I'm going to need your phone. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, hold on. Maybe that wasn't meant to be the punchline. I'm sure we're getting somewhere. It was just a setup that wasn't talking about killing a kid. Yeah, it's a tag. You know, here's what a tag is. Let me explain that for 40 minutes. <laughs> it's a tag. Everybody. Do you have to do that? I'm like, I don't know. Okay. All right. So now the cop, for anyone that missed it, we go back just a little bit in case uh, we talked over it a little there. The cop or the FBI, whoever this is, the, the, well, it doesn't exist. I don't know why I'm trying to clarify who it is. <laughs> this fictional character <laughs> says, uh, you know, Hassan says, I, I, I offend everybody. And the agent says, do you have to do that? Like he's... This child could have been poisoned, and the agent is chastising Hassan for having too edgy of comedy. Why are you so vicious on Twitter, dude? This is your daughter. Wait, hey, Bill Hicks, knock it off with the edge. <laughs> quit, hey, quit bothering the wrong people. <laughs> Stop asking too many questions. Who on earth have you been antagonizing? <laughs> the system. Everybody. This is like Middle Eastern do rife, you have dude. To do that? I'm like, I don't know. I don't know why I'm doing this. They give the baby back to the being people home. need their laughs. <laughs> So back to my kid being covered in anthrax. <laughs> America needs to laugh. <laughs> it's really bad when you start watching this. Like it's cringy if it were a true story, right? That he's making us do this at a comedy show. It's more of a one man show, I guess. Like this is very one man show. Hannah Gadsby vibes, right? All I'm thinking of right now is when Hannah Gadsby is yelling, "I feel pain," <laughs> and you're like, "This is a comedy show." That's exactly <laughs> What's going what on here. That's exactly what I've been thinking this whole time. Is like, imagine sitting there being like, what the fuck did I pay for? <laughs> this is terrible. Yeah, but his audience loves it. Like, they, like, the audience that he has acquired eats this up. Because, again, he's he's built his audience on um, points that he's making, not jokes. Yeah. Uh, it's tough. <laughs> I reach well, let's continue. You'll we'll, we'll get to a punchline eventually. Good Dina won't let me touch her. And it kills me. We get home. She puts the baby down. Then she finally talks to me. She goes, okay. <laughs> okay. This is great, by the way. This is great. When you're watching it, knowing that this is a lie, <laughs> we're about to get to a great moment. Because just keep in mind, none of this happened. Right. I'm going to talk about it ever again. The only reason why we're here tonight is because you chose clout over our kids. <laughs> You yeah. chose pushing boundaries <laughs> and clapping back at the patriarchy, Hassan. This is awful. I I I misread this guy. I think Hassan, Hassan your words are too powerful. Don't you know that? <laughs> Why are you so goddamn good? <laughs> you need to stop what you're doing at once. You almost killed our kid with your jokes. Son, take a break from changing the world every day and think about your child. <laughs> yeah, you'll have a monument in D.C. one day, but not yet. Keep in mind, this didn't happen, so it's all him paying himself compliments. <laughs> you chose the massive fame and fortune. <laughs> He's pretending these are his wife's words, but they're his. Right. Yeah, this is this is what you think in the shower. He's just saying it in front of an audience. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. Did you say kids? Oh, go back, go back, go back. I'm pregnant. Go back. We missed we missed what's about to be a powerful moment. Now remember, this man is making this up. <laughs> <laughs> don't forget that. Very important fact. Oh, can I say I don't really have a problem with him doing that. I don't have a problem with him lying. Like if this is just a now we know he's a liar, I guess. But <laughs> I mean, no, 
So but here's it's also the, like when Hassan Minaj, Hassan, Hassan Minaj got famous when? Eight years ago, probably, give or take? Something like that. Were people mailing anthrax at that time? I feel like the anthrax days were long over. Was he doing stand-up back then? He got on The Daily Show, I want to say... Oh, he was Jon Stewart's last hire. So it must have been like 2014. Oh, now, this... you're not famous the day you start on The Daily Show, but... You know this I mean. is fucking insane. Yeah, so, so evidently he got anthrax sent to him. Now listen to this poignant moment that uh, definitely happened. Over our kids. I go, kids? Did you say kids? She goes, I'm pregnant. I'm he's like, getting choked up. This fucking he's getting, he's getting choked up. And this is like when Michael Scott cried at the tagline for the movie that he created. Yeah. <laughs> he, he, he had no arms or legs. He could not see, hear, or speak. This is how he saved a nation. This is fucking nuts. <laughs> Did you say kids? <laughs> Don't you tell me that you're pregnant and I've got to think even more about the powerful words that pour out of me. I want to know how this bit went the night before and the night after. <laughs> my greatest weapon is my acid tongue. <laughs> and you're telling me I have to control that for my children. When it comes to me, nobody's safe. <laughs> I mean, he's just a DO. That's a callback or something. Very much you get to say whatever you want on stage, and we have to live with the consequences. Hassan, do you even have a line? You get to change the world every night. We have to live with the consequences of you speaking. You are Lenny Bruce and Richard Pryor and George Carlin rolled into one Indian man. Yeah. A real and we have to live with that. Mike, I mean, sorry, Hassan, you forgot. Handsome Indian man. <laughs> <laughs> you're Hassan. brave. You're handsome. You're smart. <laughs> you are the voice of a generation. <laughs> but now you have to be a father. <laughs> Do you think you can handle that, Hassan? Because <laughs> this is crazy. It sure I is. <laughs> Does he just like go past the anthrax thing? Does he bring it up again? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Let's keep listening. Magazine thinks you're an influencer. Oh, hold on. Go back. Go back. <laughs> I forgot about this part. You, you're too dangerous for the American public, Hassan. Don't you know that? <laughs> you even have a line? Because this is crazy. I don't give a shit that Time Magazine thinks you're an influencer. <laughs> I don't care that you were People Magazine's sexiest man alive. This goes back to your favorite thing to bring up with um, Dennis Leary writing uh, Rescue Me. Yes. Yeah. We're, Tommy, I don't care if you're a sexual Adonis. I don't care if you pleasure me night after night after night. I can't get enough. The sex is great. It's always amazing. But that's not the point. You have to care for your children, damn it. <laughs> I will Hold on. It. No, one more point I wanted to make is just that, you know, uh, neither Craig nor I are in, in this position. The Time Magazine piece on us got squashed. It did. So we don't, we don't know for a fact, but I find it hard to believe that even if you're famous, that a spouse in an argument over, like, your child was just poisoned or so you thought. Yeah. Why, why am I analyzing this? He made it all up. But <laughs> let's 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 live in his reality for a moment. Right. Your child just got poisoned. Your wife reveals there's a you know a bun in the oven, a second kid on the way. Right. Is that oh. wife in the state of mind to yell like, "I don't care if you're Time Magazine's most interesting man alive. <laughs> I don't care about all the many accolades you've accrued." I don't care that you're 2014's most handsome man on earth. <laughs> sure, the New York Times said you're the comic to watch. <laughs> but that doesn't matter in this house. 
I did not think he was this fucking crazy. This is really douchey to pretend. It's so it's so much funnier, like knowing it's a lie, because by the way, he's he's acknowledged it, which we'll get to after we're done playing this. Um, he admitted all of that, which we'll talk about. But I just want to wrap this up because it's pretty douchey. You get to say whatever you want on stage, and we have to live with the consequences. Hassan, do you even have a line? Because this is crazy. I don't give a shit that Time Magazine thinks you're an influencer. If you ever put my kids in danger again, I will leave you in a second. <gasps> That's her cousin. What? I think a woman that cheered or something. Oh, 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 oh. Vina's right. It's crazy because the first joke I ever told Saved my life. It caused oh, protests. In, <laughs> the first joke I ever to told resulted in protests around the world. <laughs> Hold on. What saved his life? We got to hear this. <laughs> I know. My first joke. And now my stupid ass jokes almost cost me my baby's life. I'm like, yeah, fuck this. This is out of control. Now I'll just give serious speeches. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm <laughs> I'm going to host a mock news show on television. I said, my jokes are getting me in too much trouble. I'll say thoughtful, serious points. <laughs> I'm gonna make and up bill it as a comedy special. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, instead of making up jokes, I'm going to make up horrible, maybe real, maybe definitely not real stories. That's when I decided I'm going to yell lies at the audience. <laughs> uh, that's pretty much it from that, right? <laughs> More or less. Yeah, more or less. Um, yeah, so Hassan Minaj responds to this article and says, yes, uh, we as comedians embellish. I'd say it's like, you know, 70% real and 30% embellished. And then this was probably the worst part, in my opinion, is that he said, uh, the point that I'm making are that it, it is that these stories happen to people. They may not have happened to me, but they've happened to someone. And it's like, yeah, but you're framing it as if it's your hardship you right. see like there there would actually be legitimate outrage if i as like a white guy was claiming that these things happened to me and they didn't so it doesn't really matter <laughs> that they do happen to some people they didn't happen to you you lived a somewhat privileged life for at least the last decade or so so you aren't relating to these things that you're pretending to relate to. Don't you see that it's worse to lie and say you relate to these things than not ha have gone through them at all? It's way worse. It's way worse. Yeah. So can we play the other clip I sent you? You sure can. I like how it's like a, uh, you know, a com a comic fabricates a story and you read it on the surface like a headline. You're like, so? Yeah. Well, that's the thing. That's why I wanted to read more into it because again, there's a lot of comedians that. Ooh. Lie, lie, quote unquote. What's what's worse, this or Ren is easy? Ren is easy didn't do it on stage. He just, he was te like, I, I almost feel bad for Ren is easy because like he told that lie to people, and then other people started sharing that lie, and he was like, ah, fuck, I got to defend this now. Right. Like Ren is easy didn't become. I didn't know that story until it came out that he was lying about it. And it also didn't. It, it, this could have potentially set off like <laughs> racial backlash in the country. <laughs> well, right. Yeah. Like people because were using his, this as evidence yeah. as to why, you know, George Floyd happened or something. Yeah. And in his own words, he's like the biggest thing that's ever happened. And, and to my knowledge, Ren Azizi didn't get the league because he was there on 9 11. No, you got it because he was very funny. You know what I mean? Like he didn't get into the comedy store because of that story or anything. So I, I don't like. He lied. It's weird. I think it's really weird that he made that up and kind of went with it. But he didn't tell it on stage. He kind of he tried to he, he felt uncomfortable that that got out there and tried to kind of distance himself from it. Um, he didn't do a good enough job, obviously. But like um, I kind of look at that as water under the bridge. Where this is weird in the sense that he's trying to get your pity, like him right. saying, "Hey, it doesn't matter. It does happen to people." It's like, yeah, but you accepted when people felt bad for you people trying to sympathize with you and people reaching out to you you accepted all of that when people said like hey Hassan it's awful that you had to go through that did you say thank you or did you say oh I'm making it up it actually happened to other people 
you know? Uh, exactly, exactly. Uh, Brian Kowalchuk uh, became a new member. Thank you, sir. Oh, thank you, Brian. Uh, Stut Joe Stanley, same thing, became a member. They sat down and went through the painstaking process. Yes. Yeah, I don't know how it works to become a YouTube member, but it's a real nightmare. I don't know why they don't just put a join tab on the YouTube app, but apparently it's a pain in the ass. But I appreciate you guys joining. Um, just so you know, folks, on YouTube, you get uh, the Why are You Laughing? You get Why are You Laughing a week early, as well as uh, the bonus episodes. We can't do Quincy on there. They won't let us. They will but, not. But uh, all Why are You Laughing stuff you do get. And you'll get uh, Craig and Hack Ride. That's right. That's right. Uh, Justin Trudell, five bucks. Sorry, I'm late, Mike. I'm currently dying thanks to COVID. Hashtag in Moderna we trust. Justin, save your money for more pay-per-view buys. Justin is buying a, a, a download a day of the Kirkmanahan live show in Saco. So make sure you do that. Go to Barstool TV and do that instead of super chatting me. Slash PPV. That's right. Um. Yeah, he he's convinced it was. Uh, he came on VGS last week. He's convinced Matt gave him COVID. <laughs> Can I tell you something weird? Yeah. By the way, probably I'm sure you got much more than COVID if you were in that den. Yeah, he brought pizzas. Nice. A petri dish. Yeah. Um, I had a buddy. Re- me and Albert were going to dinner with another couple, and the guy called me before and was like, "Hey, I'm sure this might sound weird. Like I've I've gotten like cold like symptoms. Do you guys care?" And I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> and he was like, well, that like cause cause COVID's back and everything. And I was like, I'm not, I, I'm not doing it again. <laughs> I, I won't do it again. I'm not going to shut down my fucking life <laughs> for this again. Don't. Be sick around me. It's fine. Please stop listening to the news. <laughs> uh, the Ang Lizard, five euros. Makes you think Jerry might have lied about airline food and Kramer might not have wanted those people to shut up. <laughs> 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 well, Kramer seemed pretty truthful. That's the one guy you can't really call bullshit on, actually. That's the thing. He seemed truthful in this, too. Anthrax definitely fell on his kid. Right, right. Well, this is one, this is, again, where I want to talk more about, like, the sympathy that Hassan got. Because this this may be true. Like, we listened to Howard Stern on 9-11. There was a lot of uh, racism towards Middle Eastern people or just people that looked Middle Eastern, which I believe Hassan's Indian, so... Um, real quick, while it, before it gets too far away, okay. Justin just sent ten bucks and said, "This is to pay for your pay per view, Mike." Thank you. I'll buy another one. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is the one about him and his dad. You want right? Uh, yes. Yeah. Let's do it. This is from the same special Homecoming King. If you want to go watch it on Netflix, uh, be my guest. Count the lies for us. Actually, no. This is a different. This is a different special. That one. Oh, this from- is his first one. This is the first, the one we just played was from the King's Jester. This one is from Homecoming. Oh, okay. Gotcha. That's basically the way our... Which means he's been lying for years. <laughs> <laughs> this man's a menace. <laughs> no, but this is what, this, like, this is one where I, you can't prove that he's lying. But now it calls everything into question like this, where if I'm his audience, and maybe his audience are such sheep that they don't care. But if I was a fan of his, I'm going to listen to stories like this now and be like, did you? Did they? Is that what happened? Yeah. That's basically the way our parents are. Ages zero through 30, they're like, no girls, right? Then when you're 35, they're like, why can't you talk to girls? That's basically the way you're like, ah, that would kill me. That's the way our parents are, right? Our parents, our parents are like a fire. You might have fun goofing on the parents now, but he's going to make a point. Don't worry, guys. We'll get there. We'll get If you're wondering what are all these laughs in the way, (laughs) don't worry. (laughs) He's going to get to a serious point. Yeah, why are they laughing at this? He's very serious. <laughs> Your information comes in, then they disseminate it to us. It's like living in North Korea. And yep. my dad is like, you know, he's the leader of the household. So when 9-11 happened, I was a sophomore in high school. My dad sits everybody down at the dinner table. And he's like, all right, Hassan, whatever you do, do not tell people you're Muslim. Do not talk about politics. I was like, all right, dad, I'll, I'll just hide it. Cool. And <laughs> this just rubs off. We're sitting there, phone rings. That's probably good advice, actually. Run to the phone, but my dad, he had a good first step, so he beats me to the phone. Said, da, da, hello? I grab the second phone. Hello? And I hear a voice. Hey! Hey, you sand nigger, where's Osama? Whoa, whoa, whoa! He looks at me. Yeah, Craig's the one that says that around here. Whoa, I was not expecting that out of him right there. <laughs> well, Craig, if it makes you feel any better, it probably never happened, so. <laughs> yeah, that's true, that's true. He looks at me. You can hear me, right, you fucking dune coon? Where's Osama? The fuck? He's just like, yeah, boy. 
Hey, you can hear me, right? 263 in Regatta Lane. That's where you live, right? I'm going to fucking kill you. Click. And my dad's looking at me. You ever see your parents and you see the mortality in them? Like, I'm looking at my dad and I see all five See, seven. he's telling stories like this and there's no jokes. It's like, look at the, the hardships that I've lived through. Jeez. And again, the point I was making before is like, we listened to Stern's audio that day. People were saying, sh like, if that really happened, it would not shock me. But now you're hearing him make these serious points. And the whole time now, you're, if you're an audience member with any, you know, critical thinking ability, you're going to be like, did it though, Hassan? Or are you just making shit up? You know, right. All of it. That's Every where it gets weird when you do comedy to make these powerful points. It's like eventually that, that kind of where, why not just give speeches? I guess. Why are you billing it as comedy? I guess is my question. <laughs> because it's funny that he's lying. <laughs> it is great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. His act to me is much funnier now that he's lying. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Because you're watching him tell these stories. The best is when he d revealed the second child. <laughs> I said, did you say kids? <laughs> and the wife said, oh, you probably didn't notice I'm pregnant because you're too busy being America's most influential human being. <laughs> uh, su super chat from David Chandler, $100. Oh, uh, David, you're too kind. Too that's kind. 10, would... That's 10 KMS pay-per-views right That's there. true. That's true. I was going to give this uh, to the foundation fighting blindness, but the F, but F the middleman. <laughs> okay, I get Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We fight <laughs> blindness here. I appreciate that. Uh, but let's, let's continue with this really real story. Yeah, yeah. I realize, no, I'm a dark book. I'm a scaredy cat. You know the way it is. We can speak two languages. We can speak at home and outside. I should have said something. I didn't. We sit down, I hear foom, foom, foom outside. So me and dad, we run outside and all the windows on the Camry are smashed in. This is in just bag. like insane. <laughs> and then Edward Norton dunked a basketball on me. <laughs> <laughs> and Ed Norton put my dad's teeth on the curb. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is where it's like, okay, so you're, you, <laughs> you individually have had all this shit happen to you. And then you find out, no, it didn't happen, but it could have. <laughs> That's what's crazy is Hassan's whole defense was like, hey, it didn't happen to me, but somewhere out there, it may have happened to someone. And it's like, I, I guess I still don't know why that's your point. <laughs> because we mentioned like Louis and Chappelle, but Chappelle didn't gain sympathy points. Like Chappelle didn't get opportunities specifically because uh, he saw a baby selling crack on the corner while his limousine driver ran into the building. We might you know what I mean? Like that, that story didn't represent Dave Chappelle, where his son is a guy who dealt with hardships. He has this perspective that he apparently doesn't have. We might have to do some uh, Patreon only stuff and just Hassan watch this and, and watch it and be like, all right, that's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Spot the lies with Hassan Minaj. Yeah. That one's not That'd be great. Spot. If he gets the daily show, that'd be a great name change. <laughs> spot the lies. Spot the lies. <laughs> Am I making this story? Is this fake news? Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> so then the, the leader of ISIS employed my, my cousin and I fucking was like, no, no way. I have kids. <laughs> They said, Hassan, we know you can afford the ransom because you are the most successful Indian American comedian to ever have walked on the stage. Aziz who, we say. Yeah, at least you don't fish hook women's mouths, Hassan. <laughs> Backpack's open. I'm like, fuck, they stole my stuff. I reach and I pull out my backpack. These pieces of glass get caught in my arm. And now all this blood is like gushing down the side of my arm. And I'm pissed. I'm just like fucking mad. Man, fuck this, man. Like, these kids, they know where we live. They're calling us. They're timing this in real time, so they're watching us. So I'm running up and down the cul-de-sac, looking in the trees, the bushes. I look back in the middle of the street. Um, I'm going to say, this guy better have a fucking gun if he's going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, where are you? I'm going to have a real talk with you. There's an army of people here trying to kill me. <laughs> I'm going to go out there with my really fragile, thin fists and wrists. <laughs> This is post 9-11. They really meant business back then, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My dad's in the middle of the road, 
sweeping glass out of the road like he works at like a hate crime barbershop. He's like, oh, no, 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 we got customers. All right, all right. I got to be honest, you know. We got to a punchline at least. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 got to be exactly what happens, you know. You, you get broken in, people are there to kill you, and your first thought is, I need to sweep this uh, up. Let me sweep it up. Yeah, well, that's what LeBron did when uh, people wrote slurs on his house. Yeah, they wrote, a slur, they wrote a slur on my house. So I immediately painted over it. <laughs> <laughs> let me clean that right up. <laughs> Yeah, so very weird. It's. It, I'm sorry, uh, this guy. This isn't a super chat. It's a very funny comment. He says, "Mohammed Gatsby." <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's very, it's very strange that that world that's been entered into because what Hassan is doing now, oddly, is also making it so that like people who are genuinely racist. <laughs> can be like, ah, that shit never happens. Look at Hassan Minaj. It was all bullshit. <laughs> like, he's taken away from people. Like, he is right in the sense that that probably has happened to people. But now Hassan has empowered people to be like, nah, it's always bull. It's the same thing with that LeBron story word that I just used, where, like, when you make up shit like that, you're empowering people to be like, ah, it never happens now, you know? Right, right. 